Hello and welcome to AW.1, the AW Women's Division blog. My name is Travis. You can read more of our articles at AW.1. Hit me up on Twitter at AW underscore one. That's O-N-E. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. It makes us feel too sweet. All right, let's get into it. This is an audio version of an article we have up online on AW.1, published April 5th, entitled TBS Title Scenarios. The next eight weeks of booking for the TBS Championship appear set. On April 21st, at AW's newest of expanding pay-per-views Dynasty in St. Louis, Willow Nightingale will challenge Julia Hart for the TBS title. And then, just five weeks later, Mercedes Monet has decreed that she gets the winner at Double or Nothing in Las Vegas. In contrast to Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson, which has a, as simple and straightforward a storyline as you could ask for, the TBS title program contains multiple storylines, as well as some auxiliary developments which could yield a revelation anytime between now and sometime after Double or Nothing. There's a lot to break down, but first, I just want to give some flowers to our current champion, Julia Hart. By the time we reach Dynasty, Julia Hart's TBS title reign will have lasted 155 days. Not short enough in the current pro wrestling landscape for me to label her a transitional champion, but the reign has been marred by her missing some time due to an undisclosed injury, which thankfully she's been able to work past. But Julia did go through a full two months without defending her title. That having been said, I can't call anything but the last six months of Julia Hart's run anything but enormous success for AEW. I go back to Wrestle Dream, and following her match against Chris Statlander, I wrote about how AEW really nailed every aspect of Julia Hart's presentation, from her goosebump-inducing entrance to all the great spots within the match. And even the post-match where her body limply swayed back and forth over the shoulder of her monster servant Brody King marching her corpse to the back. To me, this was a massive triumph that AW, now admittedly in a very controlled environment, could present Julia in this way in just her 68th career match. It'd be nice to know how much better her reign could have been should she not have needed to recover from evidently a minor injury. Uh, but whether it's Dynasty or Double or Nothing, I'm glad we had this reign. On to the number one contender. The whole wrestling world at this point feels like it's behind pushing Willow Nightingale as a juggernaut. Not only has she reeled off singles victories against Riho, Sky Blue, Queen Aminata, and Chris Statlander, not only has her name been on the lips of Mercedes Monet since before she even entered the company, Willow pinned the New Japan Strong Champion and CMLL World Champion Stephanie Vacur in the mecca of Lucha Libra Arena Mexico at the most recent CMLL pay-per-view. By stardom American Dream, Willow scoring a pinfall over Konami felt more like a form formality than a shock. All signs point to Will Nightingale defeating Julie Hart at Dynasty to become the TBS champion. It looks pretty simple and straightforward, but I like to look around and see what possible swerves could be coming up. And I've identified four. So, potential swerve number one, Mercedes Monet screws Willow out of the TBS title. Mercedes Monet coming out on Dynamite and letting everyone know that she's got the winner of Julia versus Willow at Double or Nothing is curious. I can only come up with a couple logistical reasons for why AEW may have done this. Number one, maybe Mercedes just isn't quite cleared yet. And this is AEW letting fans know to not expect Mercedes in the ring for another seven weeks. Or two, they also may have wanted to just throw more doubt into fans' minds about the outcome of Willow versus Julia. After all, they're not going to have Mercedes lose her first match in AEW, right? But at the same time, would they really give Willow a five-week TBS title reign? But then if Willow loses, we don't get Willow versus Monet, we get Julia Hart versus Monet. 
If it's not for a logistical reason, but actually for a storyline purpose, it could be that a Mercedes Monet heel turn lies in her both being angry with and kind of scared of Willow Nightingale. Mercedes could at Dynasty kill two birds with one stone by getting revenge on Willow by screwing her out of the TBS title, sort of like she probably feels like Willow screwed her out of the New Japan Strong title, and at the same time she'd also be avoiding facing Willow, since she would then be slated to face Julia. This would set up Willow for a chase storyline, which typically is how top baby faces are made, not by just having them win and win and win. The other parts of this is that Mercedes Monet keeps talking about this being a global women's revolution. Now, has that already been realized with the new AW and Stardom partnership? Or is Mercedes bringing in a heel faction of international players? If she does, Maybe that sets up a gauntlet of international talent for a Willow to go through to get to Mercedes. I'm not quite sure, but Mercedes seems like could be a possible swerve. The second big swerve that, or potential swerve that I identified that might stand in the way of Willow winning the TBS title is a Chris Statlander heel turn. Things in AW haven't been working out for Chris since she started teaming with Willow. She had beaten Willow at Battle of the Belts 8, and then shortly after started teaming with her, after which she's lost singles matches to Sky Blue, Willow herself at World's End, Sky Blue again, Riho, Willow again in the four-way, although that was Anna Jay getting pinned, and she also ate the pinfall in the tag team street fight, which I was there for live in Toronto, it was awesome, against Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Being that Chris Statlander has gone from an unstoppable looking world ender to eating losses like Thanksgiving dinner, she may understandably come to the conclusion that befriending Willow has screwed up her whole career tra trajectory. Or worse, that Willow befriended her for that sole purpose of elevating her own career. Unlike a Mercedes Monet heel turn, this feels inevitable. Will it happen at Dynasty? Or does Stat wait until Willow has the TBS title before doing it? After all, that way she can get revenge on Willow and get her TBS title, which she was never pinned for, by the way, back. Potential swerve number three, Stokely Hathaway sells out. Stokely Hathaway is a shifty motherfucker. We all recognize this. As much as it warms my heart to see him exude genuine looking joy at the successes of Willow and Statlander, I think we all expect him to jump at anything that he perceives to be a bigger fish. While screwing over Willow wouldn't feel too out of character for Stoke, there hasn't been any type of breadcrumb trail, at least lately, that I can trace to why he would do this now. Now this is not to say that this would be like a, a Bischoff or Russo-esque swerve, as it would actually make sense, but unless they do something within the next couple weeks. Obscuring a swerve through abstaining from showing you the hints isn't my favorite type of writing. It should all be there in plain view if you're looking for it. And I mean, I'm not always the, the greatest observer, but I'm not seeing it. Although if Stokely were to sell it to Mercedes Monet, I, I could understand that. There has been a couple little teases of that. It would also interestingly set up the door for like a remorseful Stokely down the line. I don't know, I think that would be an interesting storyline, an interesting uh, sort of dynamic that Stokely could carry. And potential swerve number four, and this is a bit of a long shot, but what if Stephanie Vakur from CMLL enters the mix? You'll recall I mentioned that Will Nightingale pinned Stephanie Vakur back at last month's CMLL pay-per-view. Well, in addition to the new Japan Strong title being the title that was originally meant for Mercedes Monet, to be the inaugural holder of, Stephanie Vakur is who Mercedes Monet defeated in the semifinal to face Willow Nightingale. Mercedes Monet versus Willow Nightingale for the TBS title feels like a big enough match on its own. Logistically though, maybe New Japan is itching to get Big Lilac, as I like to call the New Japan title, back around the waist of Mercedes Monet as it was originally intended. And for CMLL, 
if that cougar is going to lose that belt, they'd probably prefer to do it in a way that doesn't have her getting pinned since she is their world champion. So in storyline, what if that cougar figures that this is her opportunity to avenge both losses at once and she buys her way into that fight for the TBS title by putting up her own New Japan Strong title? In which case, it would truly be double or nothing for all three participants. Like I said, it's a bit of a long shot, but it would make sense, like even just politically between these three wrestling companies for it to go down like this. And in storyline, it just all kind of like beautifully falls together. I don't think that's gonna happen, but it would be really cool if it did. If I had to make a prediction, it's hard to come up with all these scenarios and then decide which one you think will happen because naturally you end up liking one more than the others. And I really like that uh, three-way of the Stephanie Vakura idea. But I think Willow wins at Dynasty and Mercedes comes up immediately after and faces off with her. And then this sets up the match at Double or Nothing, which feels like neither can afford to lose. You know, you really can't have Mercedes uh, lose so early on her face, her first pay-per-view match, at the very least, maybe her first match in AEW. Or can you? And you can't have Willow just hold that title for five weeks. Or can you? As I said, I think Willow wins, and then I think Chris Statlander turns on Willow at double or nothing, costing her the title, giving Mercedes her win back against Willow, and then setting up a program between Willow and Statlander. So that's my take on all this. You can let me know what you think in the comments below or hit me up at Twitter at AEW underscore O-N-E. Thanks for listening. And as always, remember to let the women in your life know how much you appreciate them.